untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue artifact deck built around Jenga Taxius, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, the 7 mana 5 5 mythic rare legendary Fraxen Praetor from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Says whenever we cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy. This ability only triggers once each turn, and a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. And then whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant or sorcery spell, we get to counter it, and that also only triggers once each turn. So in order for the opponent to kill Jengitaxis, they first need to get a spell countered, to then have enough mana to play a removal spell afterwards, to finally kill our legendary Phyrexian Praetor. So very difficult for the opponent to interact with, and in the meantime Jengitaxis can provide a ton of card advantage by doubling our card draw spells and our artifacts. So the goal of the deck is to either ramp into Jenga Taxis using cards like the Celestus and Network Terminal to generate additional mana, and the other way we have of cheating a Jenga Taxis into play is thanks to Dollhouse of Horrors, which can potentially reanimate it. So it's a 5 mana artifact, can pay 1 mana, tap it, and exile a creature card from our graveyard to create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 0 0 construct artifact in addition to its other types, and it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each construct we control, including itself, and that token also gains haste until end of turn. So if we can discard Jengitaxius, maybe using a Thirst for Knowledge or a Network Terminal, then we can potentially reanimate it using Dollhouse of Horrors to get it in play much sooner. And then we can potentially also cast a spell we can copy right away to leverage that mana discount. So that's the main game plan of the deck. And then besides Jenga Taxis, we also have Holebreaker Horror as another powerful 7 mana creature that we can either ramp into or cheat into play with our Dollhouse as a 7 8 with Flash that cannot be countered. And whenever we cast a spell, we can either return target spell we don't control to its owner's hand or return target null and permanent to its owner's hand. So this can bounce opposing permanents back. And if we have an instant, we can play alongside it. We can also use it as a pseudo counter spell. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck now, starting out with the full playset of Fading Hope, an instant to bounce a creature, potentially scry one in the process as well. So this is great early interaction to buy time to set up our powerful late game, also one mana instant to combine with Hullbreaker Horror, so we can potentially bounce something alongside it, or to copy with Jenga Taxius, so we can potentially bounce two creatures at once. Then we also have the full playset of Automated Artificer, a 2 mana 1 3 that can tap to make colorless mana, but we can only spend it to cast artifacts or activate abilities. Now, while it doesn't ramp into Hullbreaker Horror or Jenga Taxis, it's still very useful in our deck, where we can potentially ramp into a dollhouse and other various ramp artifacts, and we also have a lot of activated abilities between cards like the Reckoner Bankbuster to draw cards, maybe activating a network terminal, or even activating a dollhouse of horrors, and there's a ton of other mana sinks available. Then we also have two copies of Reckoner Bankbuster as a 4-4 vehicle, crew cost is 3, although we're mostly going to use it to draw cards as it enters with 3 charge counters on it, can pay 2 mana, tap it and remove a charge counter to draw a card, and then if there's no charge counters left, we get to make a treasure token, as well as a 1-1 pilot that can help us crew the Bankbuster afterwards. Then we can also potentially foretell Behold the Multiverse on turn 2 to later cast it for 2 mana as a powerful instant that lets us scry 2 and then draw 2, another great spell to potentially copy with a Jenga Taxius. Then we have another card draw spell with Thirst for Knowledge, 3 mana instant lets us draw 3 and then discard 2 cards unless we discard an artifact card, although sometimes we actively want to discard cards like Holebreaker and Jenga Taxius to then later reanimate with our Dollhouse of Horrors. Then we've got our full playset of Network Terminal to help us ramp, but we can also pay one mana, tap it alongside another untapped artifact we control to draw a card and then discard a card, so that can get rid of lands in the late game or help us discard some of our creatures to later reanimate. Then the Celestus is a legendary artifact, introduces the day and night cycle, and then we can pay 3 mana, tap it to switch it from night to day or vice versa, and then whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, we gain one life, and then we can draw a card, and if we do, discard a card. So yet another discard outlet to discard our expensive creatures. And it's pretty easy for our deck to simply pass a turn and let it go to night and simply activate something like a bank buster or cast one of our card draw spells at instant speed. So we're pretty good at switching between day and night. Then at 4 mana we've got 3 copies of Myriad Construct, a 4-4 artifact creature construct, 
and that creature type is very important as it synergizes with Dollhouse of Horrors, so it will potentially pump up a creature we reanimated as well. It has Kicker for 3 mana, and if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each non-basic land or opponent's control, and a lot of decks in standard nowadays are filled with non-basic lands, so that can make the construct a lot bigger. And then whenever the construct becomes the target of a spell, we sacrifice it and create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens equal to its power. So if the opponent targets it while it's a 4-4, we get 4 one, 1 tokens, and all those tokens are also constructs, so once again they synergize very nicely with the Dollhouse of Horrors. And in fact, sometimes we actively want the construct to die, in which case we could simply target it with our own Fading Hope, turn it into a bunch of 1-1s one to then pump up our Dollhouse of Horror creatures, and then we can maybe even reanimate the Myriad Construct with the Dollhouse to once again be able to make more 1-1 one, one tokens afterwards. Then we also have two copies of Tazrat Betrayer of Flesh, with a passive ability saying the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs two turnic mana less to activate. So already that's quite impactful with cards like Bankbuster, which can now draw a card without paying any mana, plays with the Network Terminal and the Celestus, which have activated abilities, and can also potentially use the Dollhouse of Horrors the turn we play it without having to pay one mana, and we can potentially use an ability in our turn, and then once again in the opponent's turn to get a discount twice. Then Tazeret starts out at 4 loyalty, the plus 1 lets us draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards unless we discard an artifact card, the minus 2 turns one of our artifacts into a 4-4 creature, and the minus 6, which is pretty achievable, gives us an emblem saying whenever an artifact we control becomes tapped, we get to draw a card, which can also be very powerful. And then we've got our 3 copies of Dollhouse, Hullbreaker times 4, and 3 copies of Jenga Taxes. Then the mana base also includes 4 copies of Treasure Vault as an artifact land that we can potentially discard to Thirst for Knowledge, or Tazeret's plus 1 ability without having to discard anything else, can also turn it into a 4-4 creature with a minus 2 on Tazeret, and can potentially tap it alongside Network Terminal to let us loot if we don't control any other artifacts, so that's quite a bit of synergy. Then we've got the Soaring City, the legendary land that can channel to potentially bounce something, and then a bunch of basic lands and four copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, which can turn into a 7-7 creature, even have the automated artificer to help activate it. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, Keepable Hands. Turn 2 Artificer could ramp into turn 3 Constructs. Got a few card draw spells to help hit our land drops. Maybe find our dollhouse eventually. Up against blue white, so it could be a control deck. In which case we've got a reasonable hand for the matchup. Ooh, there's a dollhouse. So hopefully we can resolve that as soon as possible. Opponent foretells what could easily be a Doomscar, which is unfortunate because I'm unable to play the Dollhouse and I'm going to lose the Artificer next turn. So best I can do is cast a Thirst to hit my land for the turn. And discard probably another Artificer at this point. And attack for five. At least we picked up a Tesseret, so that's not a bad follow-up to a Doomscar. There it is. Could still go for Dollhouse, although would be unable to activate it. So I'm kind of liking the idea of Tesseret's turn my Treasure Vault into a creature to keep up the pressure here. Made sure to uh, leave the treasure vault untapped that was already in place, so it doesn't suffer from summoning sickness. Since I don't think this gives haste. And we'll hit for four. And then now with Tesseret in play, we could potentially activate Dollhouse without having to pay the one mana. Fateful Absence answers Tesseret, but we still have a 4 4 in play at least. And once again, don't feel too compelled to play Dollhouse when I cannot activate it. So I can attack for 4, play Celestus, crack the clue main phase to hit my land. I guess we'll start here and see if there's a response. Mm, 
no land. Well, still gonna hit for four. Revitalize against three. That's fine. So maybe next turn we can go for Dollhouse Activates. Revelry makes a couple tokens, draws a card and gains four, so the full value. Okay, so now what? Dollhouse could get back. Maybe an Artificer first before going for Construct. Yeah, even if they counter it, we've got a backup. So that's probably fine. That resolved. Go for Artificer. And then just hit for four. Make them chum block. And then we're not too far from playing a kicked Myriad Construct, which would get quite a few plus one counters here, opponent with just a one basic land. And then if we can target it with our own spell to turn it into a bunch of 1-1s, one it could also improve our constructs that we get from Dollhouse. Opponent with the Emiria's Call, so their 1-1s one are indestructible, no point in attacking this turn. Could Thirst maybe discard a creature we pick up and take it from there. Alright, Fading Hope is not bad. Get rid of a terminal. And then... If I play terminal... Using... The Artificer... Could also bring back an Artificer with the Dollhouse. And then I could play Network Terminal and still cast Behold the Multiverse. So let me do that. Foretell. And pass a turn with Fading Hope available. Another Revitalize, put him back up to 16 now. And the Angels just to one attacks. I guess we'll take four and cast Behold instead of Fading Hope. Still looking for Jinga Taxius and Hullbreaker Horror. Alright, put on Disrupt so our card draw, unfortunately. I could activate Network Terminal. I could play a Kicked Myriad Construct with Fading Hope at the ready, which could set up a pretty fun play. And then Dollhouse can also get back a Myriad Construct. Yeah, maybe that's worth a shot. So let's see, four, five, six, seven. See if that resolves. It does. Dollhouse bring back Construct. And then I can attack with everyone. See how they respond. And then Fading Hope blowing up my own Myriad Construct at instant speed could catch him off guard. That opponent's got a Fateful Absence. They're doing the work for me. So now do I want to just bounce one of their blockers? Probably. And if they don't have anything, they would be dead. Ooh, a disruption counters it, so now they can chump, 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 take four and survive. And I guess they might have a Doomscar here to clean up, but if they don't, they're in trouble. Well, they need a double disruption. Let's see if they can find a Doomscar. So that's a synergy with uh, Construct and Dollhouse that's so powerful. Opponent cannot find a Sweeper and explodes. Awesome, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Fading hope on one, behold on two, thirst on three. Although I'm probably not going to bounce the shambling ghasts. Got another one. So against these mono black control decks, sadly Jin does not counter planeswalkers, which is their main set of win conditions. But it does counter something like a Blood on the Snow and various other spot removal spells. So we're taking a couple early hits. Now I'm lacking Network Terminal to develop our mana first. And then we either try and hardcast Jin or find a Dollhouse, in which case we might want to discard it to Thirst. Opponent passes, we'll take our draw step. And yeah, we'll just pass, I think. I could behold main phase, in case I find another 3 mana ramp artifact, maybe that's actually worth it. Double hull breaker, I'll keep one of them. And pass it back, and then we can still thirst. And now with our two 7 drops, I wouldn't mind finding a dollhouse. There's Sorin. The vampire we can bounce with Fading Hope. You deal this annoyance. No Dollhouse, probably get rid of a Treasure Vault. Could still discard some of my 7 drops, but we're close to just casting them now. And the Tesserets. All right, so Tesseret could plus, discarding another Treasure Vault, perhaps. And then I can still Fading Hope. Could also turn Network Terminal into a creature to kill Surin after bouncing the Vampire. That's maybe better, although I would lose Tesseret on the way back. Although killing a Planeswalker is always nice. Yeah, maybe that's still better. Although I might have wanted to turn my Treasure Vault into a creature as opposed to Network Terminal, in case they kill it. This is what real looks Do I want a backup terminal? Not really. So trade Planeswalker for Planeswalker. But we might have a 4-4 left over. Hive of the Eye Tyrant might also turn on here, but it's just double shambling gas instead. Savor your little victory while it lasts. And a uh, kicked Blood Chief's Thirst still kills a terminal, sadly. Can main phase Thirst in case we find something relevant. Like a Celestus. And then next turn we can finally play our 7-drop. Still at a relatively healthy life total. Celestus transforms. And... What do I discard? Maybe a land? Sure. Could also go for Artificer. Although it's something we can maybe copy with Jin. Another Celestis we can certainly discard. So I can just play Jin, which only really gets punished if our opponent goes lands into Professor Onyx to minus. Hullbreaker could just die to instant speed removal. And I guess a Meat Hook Massacre plus Shambling Gas could also finish off Jin, but we do have a backup. So maybe it's fine to still go for it. And we'll see what happens. But Meat Hook Massacre seems likely. It's gonna be a Feed this form, plus they'll need another removal spell here. Infernal Grasp. Fair enough. Still a nice 2 for 1. 
So lossless triggers, get rid of the backup copy. And then now I don't hate Jin plus maybe double bank buster over double artificer. So we've got some value. And still have our hull breaker as a nice leftover. Field of Ruin could destroy a treasure vault. Deadly Dispute on Ghasts, that gets countered. So they might have a removal spell next. Alright, feed the swarm, so opponent with a ton of removal here. Can still accrue to block the Shambling Gas at least. But Jin still countered the opponent's spell and got to copy the Bang Buster, so it's still a pretty good deal. And we still have Dollhouse as a top deck to potentially bring it back. What are we thinking? Can flash in the Hole Breaker. Can let it switch to Knight with the Celestas by passing and then draw with the Bang Busters, maybe. Don't feel compelled to play Kicked Myriad Constructs. Hall I might want to keep. Could also keep the Artificer as a way to trigger the Hole Breaker. I think we'll be fine without it. Hive turns into a creature. So that might go after Jin. Uh, anything I want to do in response? Could maybe draw with the Bank Buster. And probably want to draw with the original one in case we bounce it ourselves to reset it. Fading Hope is exactly what I was looking for. So, yeah, play Hole Breaker. Fading Hope can bounce both Shambling Gas and Hive. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, our hand's a little bit slow, but I'll try it. Turn one planes, but no one drop at least. Another four drop in hand, not exactly what we were hoping for. I think we'll go for Celestus, even though Thirst is likely to draw me a land just to guarantee playing a four drop next turn. All right, borrow time, can exile the Celestus. Fair enough. And then now I'm forced to Thirst to hit my land drop instead. And one Construct can go. Construct a little awkward when facing Borrow Time as it's an ability of an enchantment as opposed to a spell that's targeting it, so we don't actually get the 1-1 tokens from it. There's Edgar, so opponent on kind of the black-white token sacrifice deck. So we have a few options. Um, could go for Tezzeret, turn my land into a 4-4. Doesn't line up great against Edgar. Could instead just go for Artificer plus Thirst, which is maybe better. And dig for something like a Dollhouse of Horrors, which is probably how we go over the top in this matchup. Try and ramp into Jenga Taxius is another one. We'll take four. And Sigarda Splendor is unexpected, but fair enough. Okay, there's Jingataxius. Don't have a dollhouse yet, so I don't think I want to discard it necessarily. But an Artificer can go. Well, there's a dollhouse, so slightly regretting that now. Although Tezzeret can always discard. So, what's my play? Could play the dollhouse now, bring back a Myriad Construct. Which is not too bad. Which can then attack with haste. Yeah, that's fine. Could also bring back another Artificer instead and save the Construct until a little bit later. Once it's bigger so that uh, we get more 1-1 one -one tokens when it dies, potentially. Sure. Sure. 
And then next turn the plan is Tesseract to discard to Jin. And then we can maybe still copy a Thirst for Knowledge, although another Borrow Time exiles the Dollhouse, sadly. We do have six mana, so we could still just hard cast Jenga Taxis next turn with a land. Just doesn't line up great against enchantments, that's the one card type it doesn't shine against. Okay, so what's the plan now? Could play Tesseret to loot, could play Construct using my Artificers, and that still leaves enough mana to play Tesseret. I guess Tesseret to draw is not a bad idea. with Vanishing Verse in response. They've got all the answers. I think I want to cast a Construct, so we're discarding two other things. Which probably means maybe another Tesseract and one Hole Breaker, so we can maybe reanimate it with another Dollhouse. But the main game plan is still to play Jin. And then this also pumps the other Artificer. Which we get back with a dollhouse, so we can hit for two. And then Hullbreaker could also be pretty good at stabilizing us. Alright, Hive gets in there, could exile the Hullbreaker in our graveyard. So that's probably their plan. Do I want to trade for Edgar? Not really. Although if I take 7, I'm at 5. It's pretty low too. Alright, I guess we'll trade. Okay, so we can play Jenga Taxius now. Or I could try and wait until after... I have a little bit more mana to cast Thirst, so we can copy that right away. But that might be a while. Could flash in a Hullbreaker end of turn. Instead. Soaring City we could also activate, so we do have a few options. Artifact Creature Enchantment can be bounced, so I could get back my Dollhouse temporarily. Although, of course, I got rid of my Hullbreaker Horror. Is that still maybe the play to get back a Myriad Construct? Bounce the Borrow Time, get back Myriad Construct. And then, let's see. Four mana. Can still cast a Thirst as well. Sure. And we can cast Thirst at instant speed to prevent Hive from exiling it. So they might have to go for Borrow Time on Dollhouse again. Pona just stays back instead. So they've got other plans. Okay, so... Yeah, I could discard Hullbreaker and reanimate it and then cast the Celestus to trigger it right away. That's not a bad sequence. Or I can copy the Celestis, but of course it's legendary, so not the best combo with Jingitaxis. If I bring back Jingitaxis, they're just gonna exile it with Borrowed time. So I think we'll go for Hullbreaker plus maybe Islands. Untap, Fading Hope's a good one. So step one, bring back Hullbreaker Horror. And then now we can start bouncing stuff. Including Edgar or Sigarda Splendor or even the token. Maybe go for this first. And then Fading Hope, essentially one mana counterspell. 
or pseudo counter spell with the hold breaker in play. Right, opponent's gonna try and kill it. So I could fading hope something like the token to bounce the mastery for a turn, which may be worth it. And a network terminal I probably don't need here. Although that is a way of discarding Jin. Celestus is in play. And probably just attack with the team. I'm at 9, so not at the risk of dying to their creature lanes. They could cast a 2 mana mastery if they want to. But they don't. So we might see something like Blood on the Snow next turn to wipe my board. Celestus triggers too. And probably don't want to discard Jin, but a Bankbuster can go. Still have our Hall of the Storm Giants to potentially pressure them. Right, Shadow's Verdict will exile a lot of things, but it doesn't get rid of my Hole Breaker or Construct, as they still have their respective mana values, and our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, Keepable Hands. Could use some ramp, but we've got early plays. And hopefully by now it's become clear why I like a few copies of Behold as an early play to smooth out our curve. Probably fine to play Soaring City, hang on to Treasure Vault for Thirsts, and then... I think I just thirst here over playing the Artificer, so next turn we can Behold plus Artificer to be more efficient. Opponent on a black-white controlling deck. And a Treasure Vault can go. Tezzeret's not bad. I think we'll go for Tezzeret next turn once we have a Bank Buster in play, maybe. So this turn I can Artificer plus Bank Buster. Over Behold. And then next turn, Tezzeret can let me use the Bank Buster for free. Alright, Thirst kills Artificer, that's fine. Play Tezzeret, which can draw. Opponent's gonna Soul Shatter and Response will draw. Tesseret down. And. Might wanna hang on to Terminal since it still kinda ramps us. Play Island for the turn. So play Terminal. And then I can both draw with the Bank Buster and with Behold. Maybe draw here first to give us a better idea what to look for with our Behold. Opponent's flashing in the Wanderer. So maybe play around a Counterspell, that's fine. And then both of these are fine, actually. So, could play Jin with Fading Hope backup, or Hullbreaker with Fading Hope is also a good one. A lot of options. Would be better to play Jin and Bankbuster in the same turn if we can. So maybe this turn we go for Hullbreaker. Um, without keeping up Fading Hope, or with keeping up Fading Hope? I guess we still keep up Fading Hope. So we can maybe bounce an instant speed removal spell back. Amper's gonna minus. Keep watch 
And I guess we'll ambush a token here, sure. If they kill Hallbreaker, I could also crew the Bankbuster in response. Since it seems like I'm not going to be able to stop the Vanishing Verse for just two mana. So I think that resolves. Could have also used Fading Hope to bounce the Hallbreaker back to my hands. Also an option, Baleful Mastery. Alright, at least we're flushing out all these removal spells, so now Jingataxi is going to be very hard for the opponent to deal with. And I think we let that happen, as opposed to bouncing the token. So that way, if I don't draw an untapped lands, I still get to play Jin with Fading Hope back up. Another Hallbreaker is nice too. But I think now we can go for Jin. And then Fading Hope can bounce two tokens. Or bounce Jin back as well. And it's going to require a pretty specific answer for the opponent to deal with it cleanly. Remember your training. If they attack, it could imply a Meat Hook Massacre. Nope, opponent just stays back. Though I want a Fading Hope times two, sure. And a Network Terminal I don't have to keep, but our opponent has already seen enough. Jingataxi is just too powerful, next turn was gonna maybe double a bank buster, and then Thirst and the opponent's turn could be doubled as well. So you can see how the value starts accumulating very quickly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got an interesting opening hand. It actually kind of works with a bank buster that draws additional cards that we have some cheap interaction. And then Fading Hope could scry towards additional lands as well. Up against the red-green, so if this is some sort of werewolf deck, I'm happy to have all this interaction. So let's send a Naturalist packing. And it's probably still fine with the land here. Play Bank Buster to keep it daytime, although next turn it's potentially gonna switch to night. I guess I can draw main phase with Bang Buster and then just bounce main phase as well. Opponent appears to be stuck on two lands and we somehow found all four copies of Fading Hope. Well, definitely the matchup for it. Hallbreaker Horror I could keep in hopes of discarding it to then reanimate with a dollhouse. Might be a bit of a pipe dream, but if we find a Network Terminal or Thirst for Knowledge or Tesseret, those are all legitimate ways to do it. Liberator sadly can destroy your artifacts, including my land even. So, this doesn't feel great. If I let it go to night, then this transforms, which is worse for me. I might have wanted to bounce it before presenting my land actually. Which they can now destroy. Right, they still go for the Bang Buster, luckily. So that worked out. And then really hope for a land to play Dollhouse. Otherwise we'll play Tesseret, I guess. Which is a way to discard Hallbreaker and Jin. Definitely gonna lose Tesseret here. But that's okay. Results. Keep working. I guess Fading Hope could still save Tesseret potentially, and then next turn I could Dollhouse and activate. Another Naturalists, yep. Well, drawing all for Fading Hope is one way to still potentially win these very difficult creature matchups. Keep a land. Tesseret lives. And now I get to bring back Jin. And then wait on Hullbreaker until next turn when we can play something afterwards. And then Tesseret has to be a little bit careful. Because if we tap Treasure Vault for mana, then it counts as the first activated ability of an artifact. So 
actually have to play the island here if I want to use the dollhouse for free. And bring back Jin. And then Tesseret could turn my land into a 4 4. So that can play defense. Okay. And then next turn, Dollhouse plus maybe play a Myriad Construct would be nice. Hope to dodge another Liberator. Jin counters the Moonrise. So that probably wasn't a play. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Well, got pretty lucky to draw all those bounce spells early. And that's also the reason why I didn't play this deck in Ranked today. I tried it out briefly, but got matched against Mono White deck after Mono Red deck. And uh, yeah, those matchups are pretty much impossible to win unless you've got the perfect draw and the opponent stumbles. So that wasn't a great viewing experience, but when facing those more mid-rangey Black Sacrifice decks, you can usually pull off some powerful synergies, and that's where Jin and Hallbreaker Horror really shine. So I wouldn't recommend this for ranked play, but still a pretty good home for Jingitaxius, so I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. So I want to thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.